In episode 14, we learned about how to create walls. Today is episode 16 and let's add some doors to our walls. Let's start with this project, but I already have a few walls. To place a door here, let's go into architecture tab and use door tool. I do not have a family loaded for the door, so let's go and load one. Doors are loadable families, which means the design of the door that you would like to place must be loaded as a family in the project. Let's say that I want to create a single panel door. I will open this family and load it into the project. Now the door tool is active and under type selector I can see the name of my family and it has one type currently. Most of the doors that you have in your default library are already parametric, which means you can duplicate a type, let's say 1200 by 2100 millimeter and you can change these parameters to change the size of the door. Not all doors are created parametric. It's really up to the user how the door is created. But if you have a parametric door, you can change the values of these parameters and have a custom size. Now let's go to this floor plan view and add a door here. You can use the spacebar to flip the orientation of your door. Even after placing the door, you can use these flip controls or the spacebar to flip the orientation of the door. Let's say that I want to place this particular door exactly in the middle of this passage. How can I do this? Let's go to annotation and use aligned dimension. I'm going to choose wall faces as my reference. Let's create a continuous dimension between the wall face, the middle of the door and another wall face. Now when I select this dimension, I get the option of making this dimension equal. Let's choose that. Now the door is exactly in the middle of these two wall faces. If this wall is going to move, even the door is going to move so that these dimensions remain equal. If you do not want this behavior, you can choose this dimension and remove this equality constraint. Now if you try to move the wall, the door is not going to move with it. Now let's create another door. I'm going to use keyboard shortcut DR to activate the door tool. And I'm going to choose a smaller door, which is 850 by 2000. Let's place it somewhere around here. I can use my flip arrows or my spacebar to change the orientation of my door. If you select the door, these temporary dimensions are going to appear and you can take their help to change the position of your door. You can also take help of your permanent dimensions to revise the position of your door. To create the same type of door again, instead of going to the door tool, I can also select one of the existing doors and choose create similar. Create similar is a very efficient tool. It is basically a shortcut to almost everything in Revit. If you choose a door and go to create similar, a door tool is active and the same type of door is selected in the type selector. Let's say I'm choosing this door and choosing create similar. You can see here the door tool is active and this same type of door is selected here. If I choose a wall and go to create similar, a wall tool is active and the same type of wall that I selected earlier is now active. So create similar is a shortcut to almost everything in Revit. So let's choose an existing door and use CS or create similar button. Let me add a door here. You can also use the help of your modify tools to change the position of your doors. Let's go to move and move it exactly at the edge of this face. Let's create another door but using C as create similar. Let's say I want to align this particular door with this one at its center line. I can go into my modify and use a help of align tool. I can choose the center of this door for with which I want to align the center of this door. Now we have a few doors in our project. Let's add door tags to them. Let's go to annotate, tag all. I already have a door tag loaded in my project, but if you don't have it, you may go into insert, load family, go under annotation tab, you will find a door tag in your library. Now let's go to annotation tab and use tag all option. I'm going to choose door tags with this particular door tag. 
This particular tag that we are seeing here is reporting the value of mark of that particular door. It's an instance mark, which means every single instance has a different number that it's reporting. On the edit type, you have another mark, which is called type mark. This is the identification number of that particular type. For example, let me change this to D1. How do I make this tag report type mark instead of mark? Let's select one of these tags and go into edit family. The family editor is open and here I can see that this particular label, if I go into edit, is reporting the mark parameter. I can remove this mark parameter and instead use type mark parameter. Let's load this family back into our project and overwrite it. You can see here that now the tag is reporting the type mark instead of the mark. This door is a different type and it has the type mark 18 here. I can change this type mark from this properties palette or I can simply click on the tag and change its value. If I go into edit type under type properties, you can see here the type mark has already changed. If you would like to create a custom door tag from scratch, Watch our next episode. If you would like to follow this door tutorial, you may go into my website learningrevitonline.com. You can also download the same sample file that I was working on and follow the tutorials step by step. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe, stay tuned and I'll see you in the next.